Hey people, what's going on? Welcome to Real Tough Talk. Tough Talk. H how is that even possible? Tough Talk. Whoa! Stephen J. Partner goes, show some respect. You did not answer the question. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. He's a bad. He finally said it. The slip was gone. The dress has holes in it. The car turned the tough pumpkin again. So what else are you gonna I do? I this team couldn't cover a twin mattress with a king size shoe. Lights out, season. Lights out for you. <laughs> let's try, let's get as quick into the game as possible because I am not staying in this wig longer than I have to. I want to play it out, bro. So I'll talk. All right, people. Once again, want to thank y'all for joining us. We're excited to bring you another episode of Real Tough Talk. And it's like, it's hard to believe the season's almost ending. Next week will be the last week of the regular season. And it seems like this season just flew by. I mean, there's a couple of good reasons for that. First of all, sometimes when you're enjoying the games, it just seems like time is flying. So that's the usual reason. Another reason is, shout out to Tim with the scheduling, because the way that the season was able to move because of the double headers, the way certain teams were able to face each other. It streamlined the season where we were able to put games together without us um without stressing too much teams out and it was able to flow perfectly. And we're gonna talk about a little towards the end of the show about um EHS opening up with their kids league, flag league. We got some footage, little clips, few pictures, and we'll talk about that. And um you know, basically a lot of football on this show, as mm -hmm. you know. And we're going to jump in right into the first game we want to talk about. This game is going to be Never Scared versus Grind Time. Never Scared is coming off of a loss to Team X. Grind Time is coming off of a close win to the Browns. And you see this team also coming in. You know, Grind Time is going to come in at 3-2 and two with the number four defense in the league and mm -hmm. the number six offense in the league. As Never Scared coming in at 3-2 and two also with the number ninth offense, I mean, number ninth defense in the league, and slipping at number eighth offensively when last year they were in second place. And the reason of that, one of the main reasons of that is, one, a lot of their, play, uh, some of the main reasons is, one, some of their playmakers are not performing the same way that they did last year. They're not having as good a year as they were last year. And two, because of the last two games, they lost two in a row. One to Carver, and I believe the last one was to Team X, where they struggled to score both games. And I think that's the reason why they dropped from the high level that they usually are all the way down to eighth. And grind time, this is their first year. You know, Lewis played in this year, but this is the first year him having his squad. And, you know, they're playing better defensively than we thought they would because they lack the size, you know, um, that, that a lot of teams will figure you need in the UFL. Yeah. But they've been able to hold their own. Um, they've missed Rob. Rob has been hurt. Um, they won't have Yomi this game, who's their top blocker. And I think that may hurt them in the course of this game. But Lou, as long as he has Bo, as long as he has White, Brian, Jalen, he has guys that's capable of making plays. And the thing about it is one thing that they make up for um, that they lose in size, they have an energy. And speed. And, and yes, speed, energy, speed, speed. Yes, that's the word for this team because they have a lot of speed guys, a lot of playmakers that can beat you with speed. Some um two of the one two three um three of which are the ones that they didn't have in that last game, which was Bo, White, and Anthony. They have them back, they're all here in this game, and they're looking to impact the game they use the way they usually do. We're gonna jump right to the game. Fred with a few short plays for a decent game, picking up the first down. Then you're going to have Fred on fourth rush, getting sacked by Anthony. Second down, Fred with blocking from Chino is still sacked by Anthony, never scared, has to punt. There is no way Anthony should be getting sacks. This kid is not known for being a defensive pass rusher, putting pressure on the quarterback, but he already has two sacks in this game, and that's the reason why you say their offense lacking because it's something that didn't happen last year. Lou on second down, throws to Bo, opening the gap, who runs for a nice game. If you look here, Julian steps up, leaving him open, and Bo is a, play, a playmaker. This guy is an elite offensive player. You have to know where he's at. We just see him come back from last week, getting a game winner with Sour Factory over UTF. This kid can make plays, and you gotta know where he's out and feel big play by him. Lou with three short passes to White for a decent game, getting him to the three yard line. Third and goal, Lou on four rush, rolls right, throws to Jalen, open in the back of the end zone, Anthony gets the extra point, seven zip. But we're gonna look here, and this was my call. It's gonna be a close bang bang play. You're gonna see the, the defender dive and just get the hands on Lou. If you look at the ball, 
if you zoom in, the ball is still just touching loose hand. Yeah. Luckily, in the playoffs, you were challenged it because it was that close. And what do you think? Because you have said I've missed calls, and you are one to say if I missed it, I missed it. What do you think of that play? I think that it was too close to say that a ref misses it, not to sound biased or anything like that, but if you look here, you have to slow it down frame by frame to see if it happened or not. When you play it fast motion, it's hard to see because it could go either way. One person will say he tagged him, another will say he missed. So if it's that close, then it's up to the ref to make that decision. All right, we're going to jump right now with 7-zip. Next play, Fred with blocker from Eric. Throws to the gap for a decent game, first down. Then Fred with blocker from Eric. It's still sacked by Anthony. The question is, what is the sack? It looks close. Coming from the other angle, you can't see it. It looks like two, but coming from the other angle, it's one hand. But it's close. The question is, how is little Anthony getting in on Eric to get the sack? And I've said it already before. Um, This is a person who's a lot shorter and a lot faster. So that's somebody that Eric is probably having trouble with. Is this the Achilles heel for Eric who's been blocking throughout the year? Very good for um for Fred. Maybe it is. We've only seen it one person. If you see somebody else doing it that's at the same stature as Anthony, I think that Eric could be in trouble. Second down, Brett, Fred is blitzed by Baca, who's picked up by Eric. Fred throws the Sean on the sideline for a decent game. Great pickup by Eric. Baca is a very good pass pressure. Eric shuts him down. Great pickup. Fourth and goal, Fred with blocker from Eric. Throws the jail on the front of the end zone. But a touchdown. Tim gets the two-point conversion. 8-7. Never scared. If you look here, this is the Eric that we all know and love. Remember, he shuts them down from even touching Fred, and they get the touchdown. And the thing about this is we haven't seen J.O. score a, a touchdown in a while because they were struggling the last two games. But this is a person you need to get back into the game yeah. first and foremost because he has been your firepower out yep. there. He's been a leading the charge on your offense, so you got to get him into this game quickly. First down, Lou on four rushes, sacked by Chino. Big sack by Chino. Then Lou throws a shot on the sideline for a decent game, picking the first down. Second down, Lou throws a Brian in the gap for a decent game. After missing on third down, fourth down, Lou throws a ball in the gap, who's tagged short in the end zone, and that's going to be a turnover. And without Yomi here, Lou does not have the time. He is not comfortable, and never scared is able to bring the pressure. And if you look throughout this drive, he doesn't look like his um, confident self in the, in the pocket because yep. he doesn't have his lead blocker there it's a different story when you have others taking up the slack because they're not going to give you as much time so now Lou has to worry about making accurate throw and still staying from getting sacked so that's a lot to worry about when you're a quarterback and that's why it kind of slowed down their drive here. Neviskate is not going to be able to do nothing with the ball the next drive they're going to have to punt. After getting the first down Lou on four rush pumps and throws deep to Bo who has a step on Julian caught in the end zone for the touchdown if you look here, Julian bites on a pup fake, getting bow open, 13-8, grind time. And one thing I got to say about Lou is he is probably one of the best in the league right now with that pump fake. I've seen so many people get caught by this fake on a pump. Julian is yet another person he catches. He steps all the way up as Lou pumps and it gets his receiver wide open for the touchdown. Never scared, can't score before I have. That's going to take us into the half, 13-8, grind time. And this is not categoristic of never scared in the first couple of games they were able to put up points in a hurry this game not so much um i think besides jo i think fred is struggling out there is it because of those early sacks by anthony getting through eric i can't say for sure it may be a factor but one thing i gotta say is their defense is not gonna hold for too long they're struggling as it is so you gotta put up points out there it looks like um, never scared of struggling, and that's why they're behind right now. As long as we can keep the pressure coming in from Anthony, we can drop back in coverage. We don't got to bring the pressure because Anthony's doing it on his own. Anthony's a small guy, so if he's able to get the pressure in, we'll take what we can get. On the other side of the ball, Bo is killing Julius. Look at this, this first play right here when Bo goes at Julius. Look at the matchup here. He can't. This is unguardable. He can't guard him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to beat him here as he steps up, leaving him open. And then we're going to look at the touchdown here. Look at this play right here. Julian can't guard Bo. Remember, he got caught before. So mm -hmm. because they got him before and he, he steps up, leaving him open, mm -hmm. now they go for the pump and go. Mm -hmm. And then they get him. So they're attacking Julian. So if you're going to change that matchup, I always think Sean, who's your best defender, should be guarding Prime Time's best offensive player. But they got Julian on him. I don't like this matchup. And that's why they got two touchdowns early in the game. We're going to jump right into the second half. On the kickoff, Bo pitches it to White on the sideline. Caught by Fred. 
runs it all the way back to the three yard line, and this is Fred doing whatever he needs to do to help his team. Great play by Fred. And the thing about this, I always want to mention that sometimes one pitch is too much. If you look here, they try to pitch it to White. Fred is aware, and he's able to snatch this ball right from White and get some great yardage, getting them all the way into the red zone. That is a great way by Fred on special teams to make a big play for his team. Third and goal, Fred rolls left, throws to John, cutting in the end zone. Jalen gets a hand in it, incomplete. Fourth and goal, Fred throws to Ouija, who makes a catch in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. Baca intercepts the extra point, but you're going to have 14, 13, never scared. And before you talk, I'm going to talk about this, you know. We didn't mention it in the beginning of the game because I wanted to wait. Um, as you see here, we're going to have a few pictures. Um, our, our guy, our former teammate, I won a championship with this guy. Ouija lost his pot. Mm -hmm. All the guys got together from both um, fields, and they did a group prayer. I thought it was excellent. It was an amazing thing. And for, for Ouija to be able to still play this game for his dad is amazing. I've been there, I've played, you know, when my niece passed away. And um, it's hard, there's a lot of emotion going on, but he comes through and you gotta know that touchdown felt really good to him. And that's why I'm sure that he wants to make something else happen even more for his team. He's gonna put his heart into his team, he's playing with a heavy heart, and that's probably why Fred should look at him more because he's gonna be that much more motivated to make plays for him. 14-13, never scared. Lou throws a shot on the sideline. Ball sails left, picked off by E, giving it back to never scared. And this is exactly what they needed. He's the guy that they picked up. He's supposed to go to Team X. Decided to come back and stay with never scared. And this is why they need him. He's a playmaker. Makes a great play here. And that's a lot of people. That's a one person a lot of people underestimate. He's very fast and he's very um, good on defense. So he's able to track the ball and get to it. On, in a hurry and big plays like that is what Never Scared need. Fortunately, he's one of the people that can make them. Fred with two short passes for a decent game. After getting the first down with Black from Eric, he throws to Sean, cutting in the gap for a decent game. Third down, Fred is blitzed by Josh, picked up by Eric. Fred throws to Tim, who beats Jalen in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. 20 to 13. This is great blocking by Eric. This is the guy who's trying to go for blocker of the year. He's dominating. He looks like he's back. Great play by him. And they need him here because Fred is able to have time to, to find Tim as Tim breaks away from his defender. Tim, another person, a big big um, pickup. Big pickup by Never Scared, a person that's helped that elevates their offense even more. And Tim is able to find him from that extra time given to him by Eric. Second down, after getting the first, Lou throws a shine at Gap, who shakes Robert and runs for a decent game. Third down, Lou on four rush, throws to Brian, cut in the back of the end zone. For the touchdown, the defender lets Brian go right past him, and this is Lou with a great dime throw. 20-19, to 19, Brian time down by one. And you're the one who says that Brian is not the best route runner downfield. I don't. Field, I think that he needs to improve on but that. But he shows that he's a good route runner on this play. He runs a good route, gets separation by his defender, and Lou makes a perfect throw and no defender can get to it. That is great connection between him and Brian for the touchdown. For, Lou goes for the two-point. We're blocking from Josh and Baca, rolls left, throws to Brian, cutting in the back of the end zone. If you look here, Chino rushes in too late. He never sees Brian, and he gets the two-point conversion. 21-20, crying time. And you got to know that this, this play is more important than the touchdown. Yep. So you got to know that you got to communicate here. If you look at E, he does not know that Brian is coming behind him. All you got to do is tell him to back up, and he's in position to make a play. Because they don't communicate, they get beat and leave Brian open for the, for the, um, the two-point conversion. Right now, the score is 21-20. After getting the first down, Fred throws the E cutting in the middle, who pitches it to Tim to run all the way to the 10 yard line. That is a great play. I like this play. Eric is a playmaker, mm -hmm. and Tim has been a guy who's been stepping up. Great play by them there. Second down, Fred is blitzed by Baca. Rolls left, throws to Tim cutting in the back of the end zone. Incomplete, but if you look here, Luigi was open to the far left, and Fred misses him. And this could have been a play to win the game for your team. Ouija's open here, trying to make something big happen for his team. Fred does not see him. If you look here, he's looking all the way to Tim. That whole play, he focused on Tim. And I think the defense focused on him as well. And that's why he wasn't able to get this pass through. And they wanted a, a, a flag for a, a substitution. Um, if you look here, I think this is the play. The, the, the play is out of the play. He's in the back of the end zone, but he's out of the play, and they call hype that the play was going that the refs didn't see him off the field. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, there was no flag. 
they didn't see it. You know, next year we're talking about having four refs because the field is so enormous. Yeah. But with three refs, it's difficult to see it. The guys are trying to keep the game going. But bottom line, Fred missed Ouija. Your main playmaker, especially in the red zone, he missed him, and I know he would like to have that play back. Third and goal, Fred on four rush, throws it to him in the back and end zone, knocked away by shot. And if you look here, I'm going to show you this play too. They wanted a hole right here. The ball is going to Tim in the back of the end zone. I think Jalen is on it. Now, as the ball is being, you see they're running a crossing round. Fred is looking to Tim in the back of the end zone. The ball is thrown in the back of the end zone. As the defender is coming over and Iggy goes back to the side, he does get turned. He does. But the refs ain't looking for E because the ball's not going to E. The ball, all, all the refs are focusing in the back of the end zone. And I don't think that was a great throw. I don't think Tim was open. I don't think Fred ever saw, was ever going to eat, and that's what happened on this play. But fine, put all of that aside. That is all relevant information that you shared. But the one thing that we're missing is look how quickly Fred throws the ball. You have Eric there protecting you, and you don't even give him a chance to block for you. Wait, let Eric block for you. Give yourself some extra seconds for some receivers to get open on his play. Fred does not do that. He's forcing these passes to Tim, and the defense is all over. If you look, Jalen and Sha is on Tim, right. following him for this play, and that's why that's yet another play incomplete thrown to Tim. Fourth and goal. Fred on four rush, throws to Jay on the back of the end zone, knocked away by Sha. And in the game, grind time comes away with the win, 21-20. And sometimes the last drive is a definition, is what is a defining point in your offense, defining point in your quarterback and define it point your team overall. If you look here, this is not Fred's um, MO to focus on one person all the time. It seems like on this drive here, he focused on Tim, probably the player that I think he's more comfortable throwing the ball to, but you gotta look at all your options out there. He missed Ouija here. He doesn't give Eric a chance to block. And then you, you're forced on the last play to um to throw it up jail. and, and yeah, fourth down. The jail. thing about this is, even on the third down play, you could go short. It's third down. Get closer to the end zone. Make it harder for the defense to make a play. But because they go for it all in the last two plays, that's why they end up not getting the ball um, in the end zone at the end of the day. This, this never scared. Offense doesn't look the same. The defense is pretty much the same. They're not a very good defense. But the offense don't look the same. Do you remember talking about Sean that much this game? Not I don't at all. Really no. remember. Mm -mm. And and the main reason it struggles is look at Sean's numbers this year compared to last year when he won defense um most improved player. He's not the same offensive player this year. And ever since Tim came, he's not even Fred's go to main guy no more with Sean. Tim is. Mm -hmm. J.O. is. I don't know if Sean's running different routes. I don't know if Sean forgot how to play offense, but he's not bringing that same intensity he brought last year offensively. He's playing good defensively. Mm -hmm. But offensively, he's not, and I think that's why Fred is struggling. On the other side, grind time comes away with a win that they desperately need. They're trying to get that number two seed. Um, this team has no A players. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As Never Scare has no A players. That's why I respect both teams. They didn't go make all these acquisitions, any pickups. They play with the guys they got. And um, grind time has been playing well. They're a little undersized. They missed Yomi today, and they missed um, Rob today being able to blitz the quarterback. Yeah. But Baca was a great addition to the team. He plays aggressive. Sometimes he screams about tags he missed. We, should, we can show you a few tags that he missed, that he yells mm -hmm. for. But at the end of the day, he brings intensity. And even Ant, who's, who's been showing ability to play offense, is you out working guys and getting sacks. And when you have that type of energy, that type of intensity, that's going to have some big plays happen for you. And that's why you inch away with wins like this. When it's close, those little plays matter yep. more so than anything else. And when you're getting plays like that from Anthony and from Baca and all of we this We already know what Bo and White is going to grind. Yes, Brian's they're, they're going to do it um, indefinitely. And then you have Brian stepping up, making some plays, well needed in this game. So when you have all of that working for you, Close slams like this are going to lean in your favor. We're going to wrap this game up. Grind time with a win over Never Scared 21 20. We're going to be right back. Real Tough Talk. Next game up we're going to talk about is YMM versus the Browns. YMM coming in with a win over Harbor Humans. Browns coming in with a loss to Grind Time. Now, you know, both these teams come in, you know, different levels. Mm hmm. 
you know, YMM is coming in tied for the number one offense in the league. Corey's been having an awesome season. The guy's coming in this game with 16 touchdown passes and two rushing touchdowns and only four interceptions. Their defense is playing ninth. They don't have a great defense this year, but that's going to happen. Jeremy's coming, is, uh, was on suspension. He's back this game, but they've missed ice. They miss um, Santana and Slutty, who's one of their best defenders, is hurt this game. He's not going to play. So their defense kind of struggled. Browns, on the other hand, their offense is tied for 11th. Mm. Not a great offense, but their defense is playing at a nice level, fifth in the league. So definitely two teams are going to have a top offense versus a good defense versus a not-so-good defense versus a not-so-good offense. And it's just pretty much a mix and match game. One team has a better offense. One team has a better defense. So all it's about is can the Browns, with their better defense, give their offense an edge with them holding um, YMM on offense? Because you let um, Corey get control of the game, the game is over. Right. That's how well Corey's been playing. Yeah. You at first, you know, when he came into the league, you wasn't convinced that no, he was. No, I wasn't able a to, Corey fan at all. Yes, you wasn't convinced to him holding the helm at quarterback and making an um the making plays happen for this team. You know, he showed some glimpses of that last year with him connected with Brandon, why he ended up being offensive player of the year, Brandon. And, you know, now you went from Oh, I don't think – I'm not really a Corey fan, but now you're calling him Drew Brees, one of the best quarterbacks in NFL, probably one of the um, a, a future Hall of Famer. That's what you're calling him right now, that you're comparing him to. So that is a big change from last year to this year. Wow. Are you a, a wagon rider now? Like, you've always been, but now Corey's in a, a new person on your list? Is he the next bad man for you? Like, what's going on with this? You want to know what's the difference? Corey – has 10 touchdowns more than last year. Last year he had six. Mm -hmm. This year he had 16. That's a big add-on of 10. Mm -hmm. If I gave you 10 more of something, you'll take it. Mm -hmm. Corey's finally showing the ability to be elite in this league. So definitely I'm going to give him props. And he's showing the ability to get the ball to any receiver on his team and hurt you. That is why I call him... Drew Brees, because Drew Brees can do it with any offensive guys on the field. If you get on his offense, he's going to make you elite. That's why I changed my mind about him. And one thing I got to say quickly about um, Brown's offense is Londy is trying his best to what he has. One, Brian um, Londy does make the same mistake a lot of times. Yes. He forces plays that he doesn't need to. Yes. But it seems like he's he feels like he has to make something happen. Yes. Because nobody else on offense is stepping up. He has a few playmakers. Binky hasn't been here consistently. You have Mills that shows glimpses, but is not consistent. You have Aha, who's an up and coming player, not having the best year so far because he just came back to the Browns in the middle of the season. Um, but not showing the numbers that he he needs to. Then other playmakers not showing themselves my disappointment is in Puka he's been here a few times but you haven't heard of him at all this season so a lot of things is put on Lonnie to force things and a lot of times it ends up being interception I give Lonnie his props I believe he ain't throwing over a year until he came back um they were supposed to go with Reggie Reggie's injured what I'm hearing but I'm also hearing he's throwing an LES mm -hmm. so that's funny I thought they picked up that was supposed to be their big acquisition mm -hmm. but Lonnie's still throwing doesn't matter because Lonnie's playing decent. He's not playing great, but this team doesn't have elite players anymore. Puka's not here consistently. Trev is hurt. Mm -hmm. So those two right there makes an impact. Binky has the next thing of being a star, but he has to be a continuously all-star. He did make the all-star team, but he has to show the ability to be consistent. I like G Black, but he's not always healthy. Aha has been the guy who's stuck in limbo and never seemed to be able to take his emotions and put it into his game and get to the next level. B-Boy, I like this kid. You know what I mean? He's definitely showing the ability to make plays. I'm a Mills fan. Mills is going to bring toughness, and he's going to bring playmaking whenever he has opportunity to. This Browns team is decent. They just need to play more plays offensively because number 11 with this type of offense is a shame. I don't care who you are. And even a young guy with Tarzan coming through with this team, they should be playing more plays offensively. We're going to jump right into the game. Third down, Lonnie on four rushes, sacked by Fan. Fourth down, Lonnie throws to Tarzan, open in the middle for a nice game, picking up the first down. If you look here, Wesley steps up from safety, leaving him open. And that's what I told you. 
why I'm struggling defensively, especially in the secondary, and these are the mistakes they're giving a big first down. Second down, Lonnie with blocking from low, throws to Tarzan in the gap for a decent game. Third down, Lonnie, blitz by Buto, rolls left, pitches it to Lowe's, incomplete. Last down, Lonnie with blocking from Lowe's, finds Bebo open in the end zone for the touchdown. Gaka leaves the corner, leaving him open. Binky gets an extra point, 7 0, Brown. And the funny thing about this drive here is Lonnie was not really under pressure this whole drive. Right. You know, he had protection from Lowe's, guys were getting open. The only time that he showed any glimpse of pressure was when Buto blitzed in. Other than that, Lonnie was protected, he was confident in the pocket, guys were getting open. That's the drive that you need Lonnie to have every single time he touches the ball. Corey, pitch throws to Wesley on the sideline, tipped by Tarzan, but called by Wesley for a decent game, picking up the first down. Second down, Corey throws to Jeremy in the middle for a nice game, getting him to the 15 yard line. Jeremy's coming back off a of suspension. They need this guy. He's a playmaker on both sides of the ball. He brings a lot of energy. He has a lot of talent. Great way for Corey to get him involved in the offense right away. Fourth and goal, Corey a blocking from G. Finds Brandon open in the corner end zone. Full of touchdowns. If you look here, Tarzan leads the corner. 7 6. Brown still up, but Wyman creep right back in. He goes to his check downs. He's getting Wesley involved. And he got G back. And he got G blocking for him. So now that's even more confidence that Corey has in the pocket. And that's why he's able to find his receivers. And it culminates in a touchdown. Lonnie throws a Tarzan in the gap for a decent game, picking up the first down. Then Lonnie throws deep to Binky, who has a step on Brown in the gap. Caught in the end zone for the touchdown. Mills gets the extra point, 14-6. Browns, if you look here, Brown calls for help, but it's too late. And Lonnie makes them pick. If you look at this play here, Brown, you know, you know, we always kill him for not being a, a clear defender out there. He's a there. physical guy. He's not a lockdown corner. And because of that, he gets beat by Binky, probably one of their faster guys on the team. And by the time Brown is able to call for help, it's too late. I understand sometimes you're going to get beat, but you got to communicate way faster than that. Brown does it too late. Nobody's able to help, and that's Binky for the score. Corby, on second down, throws to Wesley in the middle for a decent game, picking up the first down. Second down, Corey throws with Rico on the sideline for a decent game. Third down, Corey is blitzed by B-Boy, blocked by G. Corey throws to Jeremy in the gap to get them to the seven-yard line. Once again, we talk about G with the blocking. Corey looks like he's sitting in that, remember, Independence Day shield? That's what he got right here with this guy, G. And he's getting Rico and Jeremy, both guys, Rico, um, Jeremy coming off suspension, Rico coming back, hasn't really been here on second lead all the season, but he's getting him involved in the offense. He can do it with anybody. Fourth and goal, Corey on four rush, finds Wesley the back in the end zone for the touchdown. Los never steps back in the middle. 14-12, Brown still got the lead, but YMM strike right back. And the thing about this is, you, Wesley's probably had one of his best years yep. in a long time. And I, you got to give Corey the, um, the credit yeah. for that because Corey's finding him. Wesley is a very capable receiver. A lot of people cannot guard this man, and he could jump out the gym. So when you see a, a tall, fast receiver like that, you're going to get him the ball, and Corey does just that throughout his drive, and that's where they score. Lonnie throws short to Lowe's, who runs for a decent game, picking up a first down. Third down, Lonnie's blitzed by Brown. Lonnie throws to Mills, who dives in the corner end zone, but can't hold on to it. That's going to be dropped. Last down from the 20, Lonnie with blocking from Lowe's, throws to Binky, who makes a nice catch in the back of the end zone, Four touchdown, B-Boy gets the extra point, 21-12. This is a great play by Binky on Jeremy, who's a top defender back there. He's able to make a play, and you expect Jeremy to get to it, and because Jeremy's one of the best defenders on YMM. So if he can't get to it, then it has to be a perfect throw, perfect catch, and that was it by Binky. Great play by him. That's something you need to see Binky do day in, day out. He needs to be more consistent, because Lonnie needs a target like that consistently in the game. Corey gets the ball. He throws to Wesley in the middle for a nice game, picking up the first down. Then Corey throws to Josh in the sideline, who gets past Lowe's and runs it to the 15-yard line. Second down, Corey throws to Rico, cutting in the middle to get them to the 7-yard line. Third and goal, Corey on four rush, runs into the corner end zone for the touchdown. 21-18, YMM scores again. Yet, this is his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. You don't see quarterbacks rushing in for touchdowns too much in this league. Core is able to do it because he knows exactly what position he He knew the ball the was at the seven, yes. so he can still run the ball. So he catches the defense off guard. He knows that on full rush he can take off. That's exactly what he does, and he runs in for the touchdown. 21-18 YMM. Mills with a nice kick return, getting him to the 35-yard line. And like I said, Mills is a good offensive player. I like him defensively, but he's showing his ability to make plays on the kicking game. First down with blocking from Lowe's. Lonnie throws a B-boy in the gap, but it's picked off by Josh. 
B-Boy was not open. YMM gets the ball right back. Great play by Josh. And these are plays that you're going to get from Lonnie every now and then. It seems like on certain plays, he has to force something or make something happen. If you see here, he sees. Like, it seems like he thought that B-Boy was going to be in a position that he wasn't. He's guarded all the way, and Josh is able to throw um, to get the interception, putting his offense back on the field. After getting the first down, Kobe throws a brand in the gap for a decent game. Second down, Corey finds Jeremy deep open in the middle court in the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, AI is playing safety, but he plays too short, leaving him open. Gaga gets an extra point, 25-21, while MM takes the lead. And it seems like AI is stepping up to guard somebody. I don't know who it is because he leaves the backfield wide open. Jeremy goes right for it. And you know Corey's not going to miss a throw like that. He goes for it and gets Jeremy Wilder for the touchdown. Third down, Lonnie throws the A on the sideline for a decent game, getting him the first down. Then Lonnie throws deep to Picky, one-on-one -on -one with Wesley. Picky makes the catch over Wesley for a big game, taking him to the seven-yard line. And this is Binky making a great play. I'm sorry, Wes is my man, but I got to say it. I got him on. <laughs> he definitely did. Pinky went up and got it and was able to come down with it, and that's all that matters. And the crazy thing is, um, Wesley, it's like two times his, his, his height if you count him jumping out the gym. But the thing about it is, Binky doesn't care. He jumps over this man to get this ball. Binky doing whatever he has to on the field to make sure that their offense is able to put up points. Second and goal, Lonnie's blitzed and sacked by Rico. Rico gets too low. Rico's bringing his impact when he's here. He's a former defensive player of the year. He's a former coach slash captain of the year. This guy has numerous awards in the league, and he still showed the ability to make plays. Third and goal, Lonnie on four rush, steps up, throws the picky in the corner end zone for the touchdown. B-Boy gets the extra point, 28-25. Browns take the lead right back. And like I said before, when you give Lonnie too much time, his receivers find ways to get open in this game, and you're able to score yet again. YMM's defense is not looking so hot. If you have um, them putting up so much points like this, the score was earned by Binky's catch. That catch was huge, and one of the main reasons why they were able to score on this drive. Kobe throws a Jeremy in the gap for a decent game, getting him to the 48-yard line. Last down, Kobe throws a Brandon, cutting the gap for a decent game, picking up the first. If you look here, Binky runs deep, giving Brandon space, and they could have ended the game right there if they were able to stop him from getting the first down. And Brandon, the former offensive player of the year, makes a great play to get the first down. First down, Kobe throws to Kaka, cutting on the sideline for a decent game. Second down, Kobe throws to Wesley, cutting in the middle end zone for the touchdown. And Wesley just had it done to him. So why not return the favor on Aha? And sorry, Aha. You got mossed. Definitely got mossed. Aha Wood was already beaten as Wesley cut inside. And he gets mossed 20, 28, 31. YMM take the lead right back. And this reaction is what got him beat on this play. If you see here, the way he's positioned, he's not following Wesley. He's looking at the quarterback too much, makes him hesitate on the route, and because of that, he's out of position. Wesley just jumps over him to get that ball. If you, if you notice, between Wesley and Slutty this season, they've been doing this You Got Moss thing to so many people. That's what they've been doing all season. First down, Lonnie on four rush, forced to run in the gap as time runs out. Nobody short, game over, YMM comes away with the win, 31 to 28. And that last drive right there, that last play, is definitive of how this their offense been playing. They make some good plays, but then every now and then, they do not give Lonnie the safety vow that he needs to keep the drive going, and that's what makes Lonnie force certain passes. That, that's one of the main reasons why they've been suffering. I can't put everything on Lonnie. Yes, he tries to take too many risks when he doesn't need to, but you got to give him a safety valve, a comfort, a, a, a receiver that can keep him confident in the pocket. They could, they don't give him that. Lonnie's forced to make certain happen, and he can't, and that's why they end up leave, um, having a close loss. This could have been a win for them, but because they weren't able to put it together um, on offense every time they needed to, they they, they lose the game anyway. Lonnie, um, YMM doesn't have a good defense. They miss Santana and they miss Ice. And um, we seen Puto, like last season, cooling off a little bit. Mm -hmm. He did the same thing with, never, with um, Violators. And towards the middle of the season, he started cooling off. And he's doing it again this season, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But Corey's been the guy who's been carrying this team. Right now, Corey had the ball five times and scored five times against the number five defense. Right now, Corey has 20 touchdown passes and four rushing touchdowns and only four interceptions. That's some great numbers, and he's been carrying this Wyman offense. 
without, you know, where the defense has not been great. And speaking of that, they're about to get a little lighter. After this play on special teams, if you look here, if you look at this play with this, this, this clothesline to the head on Aha, that's Jeremy, who just came off a two-game suspension. The league saw this. The league in, um, had a meeting about it. And Jeremy will be suspended for the rest of the season. He's out for the season, including the playoffs. He's out. They lose one of their main defensive guys, a guy who's offensively gifted. We saw him score a touchdown in this game. And they're going to lose him for the rest of the season. The rest of the year, Jeremy's done. Coming off a of suspension. Yes, and that, that's the main reason why the league ended up making this decision. If, this, if that wasn't the case, if that wasn't the circumstances, they would suspend him anyway. But it wouldn't have been for the entire season, including the playoffs. But with something like this, come when you're coming off a of suspension, shows that the suspension didn't serve any purpose. So that's why the league has to come down harder because things like this are not tolerated at all. And... That's why we have to make a tough decision because, again, we are fans of Jeremy. We've um, seen him play from the first year that we became to the Bronx, and it's with a heavy heart that we have to make this decision and ultimately suspend it. And I love this kid. I love his passion. I love his energy. I love his toughness. And um, he's been gotten, given the nickname Bully, and that's because when you have a guy his size, who's not big muscle, not a big guy, you have to be able to have the heart in order to get the guys to respect you. But once you start injuring players, Aha was opened up. He, he got a busted mouth with this play. You see him down on the floor, and um, you see Jeremy looking like he didn't even do nothing. And we don't really like to show stuff like this, but to, he got suspended for two games for an elbow. Mm -hmm. And now he throws this. This is nowhere near a block. Is a clear hands to the face, and they got caught on video. And he's suspended for the year because the league, again, has to protect the other players. And if you allow this to continuously go on, the players are going to be forced to retaliate. And then where, does that, where do you get your league? It's a sacrifice of one in order to protect a many. And the thing about it, it's not like, oh, we're singling him out for every single thing that he does because the previous game when he, um, a previous game when he faced UTF, they were saying that he was um, doing illegal things on the field too, that he was um, th throwing elbows and whatnot. And we looked at the play and we said that there was nothing no, meriting was him meriting. getting nope. suspended or anything. He did nothing wrong in his place. So not to say that we defended him, but we said that there was nothing that he was guilty of in that right. game. Come to find out later on in the game, he would do something that is meriting a suspension. Which is an elbow to IOD Brandon, and he caught an elbow to Lou on yes. IOD. Yes, so in the same game. So we had to, we were forced to suspend him. So he comes back feeling that, okay, he served the suspension. He's going to come and play for his guys, and then he comes back doing the same type of stuff. And ultimately, if you're not learning a lesson after you just came off the suspension, that's why we have to make it to tough decision. And the crazy part is, and you know, this is not football. And um, this was the first suspension that was unanimous decision because even their first one was the, the suspension length was different. It was voted yeah. on differently. Yeah. Some of the board thought he should have got more. Some of the board thought he should have got maybe one game. So they came up with agreement of two. This was unanimous. And I think it's because he just came off a of suspension. It's a bad look. And YMM is in trouble now because they need this kid for the playoffs. Corey's been carrying them. But when you got to face a team like 99, who beat them, mm -hmm. IOD, who beat them, yeah. you need him. Because you don't know if you're going to get ice back this season. We know Tan will be back, but he's playing hurt. Yeah. This team is in very much trouble going into the playoffs. And before I say anything, before I end this up, Lonnie played great. We killed Lonnie. You know, we've we been some of his critics. But the guy had the ball six times and scored four. Unfortunately, his team gave up five, but to one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. But Lonnie played great. Yeah. I call him Eli Manning because the only problem is he threw a big interception that cost them the lead. Yeah. And that's what Lonnie tends to do here and there. Unfortunately, he does it here. But the guy's playing great to be somebody who took a year off. Um, we're going to wrap this one up. YMM comes away with the win over the Browns, 31-28. to 28. We're going to be right back. All right, welcome back. Real Tough Talk. Stephen J. Ghost, back at you on the scene. Um, next game we want to talk about is going to be the 
problems versus UTF. Now, 99 is coming in off of a win. UCF is coming in off of a win. So both teams coming off of wins after their last game. And this would be kind of like a rivalry game. These teams know each other, especially JP and Shannon. Got a little relationship, went at it when reps, when JP was with Rep City last year. Mm-hmm. But this is mostly the question of the quarterbacks, Ramsey versus Shannon. I mean, ju- just like you said, um, Shannon also um, says that, you know, he grew up with guys like Ak or whatever, that they yeah. grew up together. And, you know, Shannon was a kid when these guys were still out playing, and now he's out here, you know, facing them, facing off against them. So, obviously, this is going to be a rivalry, a, 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 a match between Ram- Ramsey and Shannon, two quarterbacks that are known to run, use their feet to get, to um, to increase time on their um, – to extend time on for themselves, but you know, obviously Shannon has a more style that's based off of running, and Ramsey more on the deep pass. So these guys are gonna have to use their weapons wisely when they face in these respective teams. UTF is coming in with the fourth rank offense tied with grind time, and 99 is the number six offense. But defensively, you're gonna have 99, the number four defense in the league, and UTF the number eight. But UTF lacks, the, I think, the speed to keep up with Shannon. You got Malo, who is a guy who I think can contain Shannon. I don't think that he can stop Shannon, but I think he can contain him. But then you get to the back end of the defense with, 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 with Ock, Pig, who I think is kind of slower, mm. doesn't have the speed to keep up. Trey's playing play well in the secondary, but he's not doesn't have great speed. So I see Shannon being able to run around in his team. But on the other side... Ramsey is not the type of runner Shannon is, but he does have speed. But he's playing a 99 problems team that doesn't have no Herbie. They don't have no Twan. Jai's not here. They're missing Bop. They're missing several of their players, especially key defensive players, should, which should help Ramsey be able to put up more points. And the thing about it, I think that Ramsey is going to take shots just because of that. I don't think that he shies away from a defense, regardless of what team they have. Um, for better or for worse, Ramsey is a gunslinger out there. That's what we, um, he was labeled because of his style. And he's going to take shots regardless. Shannon has to win this game on his feet. That's actually how he gathers time and gets the defense to step up and get him to get um, receivers open downfield. So I expect him to do a lot of running. Once he gets into the midfield, I think he's even more dangerous. Well, we're going to jump right into the game. After getting the first down, Shannon on four rush runs in the gap for a decent game. Second down, Shannon on four rush, runs again in the gap for another decent game. Third down, Shannon is blitzed by Ramsey. Throws a mess straight in the middle. That's going to be dropped. Last down, Shannon throws it up. Incomplete. Turnover on downs. UCF makes a stop. And right here, they don't bite with um, they don't bite off of Shannon running back and forth in the first two plays. He got some good yardage, but it doesn't necessarily get um, UTF to back off of the defense by stepping up to try to get Shannon. They leave the, um, the responsibility to Milo. They contain him enough that the secondary is able to hold on this defensive drive, and they make a stop here. Ramsey gets two passes in the gap for a nice game, picking up the first down. Then Ramsey throws a ran the gap for a few yards. Third down, Ramsey with blocker from G. Ramsey throws a JP in the corner ends on for the touchdown. 6-0, Ramsey with a great throw, finding JP in the corner. JP's been scoring lately. He's not really known for scoring. I un- don't necessarily understand why. Because of his size, he's a guy who can get in the end zone. He's usually the guy that they get, they, they chop the field up with. Yeah. But now this season, Ramsey will find him in the end zone. And he needs to find him a lot more because one thing about JP that we've been seeing, regardless of what team he plays on, he finds ways to get open. So you got to look for him in the, in the gaps because he finds ways to get through them and they lead to a score here. Shannon on four rush runs on the sideline. Gets past Ramsey, gets all the way to the 20-yard line. Ramsey's one of the fastest guys in the field. And if he can't keep up with Shannon, you got problems. Great run here by Shannon. Shannon on four rush, throws to Christian in the guy for a decent game, get him to the three-yard line. Randy, Ramsey goes to rush him and leaves him open. Fourth for goal, Shannon finds Jesse cutting in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. Milo gets a sack on extra point. But it's going to be 6-6 tie. What I like about this drive is this. Look at this play on, on where Shannon has the ball. He's going to run and get past Ramsey to get all the way to the 20-yard line. The next play, he forces Ramsey to step up, which gives Christian a gap. And then Shannon's able to find Jesse cutting in the front of the end zone. Because of Shannon's running ability, 
This team is scared of him, and he's making them pay. Second half, they're getting the first. Ramsey on four rush runs on the sideline for a decent game, but they can't get any further. They're going to have to punt. 99 gets the ball back, but they're not able to do nothing. They're going to have to punt. Last play before half, Ramsey throws it up incomplete, taking it into the half, 6 six. One thing I could say is because they're missing so many people on 99 side, they weren't able to do as much damage as they usually do, and Shan is forced to do everything on his feet. That's why they only have six points in the half. If I'm UCF, Shan is a running quarterback. That's what he is. He's a runner that can throw. He's not a thrower that can run. It's a big difference. Ramsey's a thrower that can run. Shannon's a runner that can throw. We want Shannon to beat us with his arm, not his legs. He has over 10 rushing attempts in the first half. That's way too many. We have to find a way to contain him. And on the other side of the ball, we had the ball three times. We, we scored on our first possession. We punted and we got stopped. But bottom line is, they don't have some of their best defensive playmakers. We have to attack and make them pay for them guys not being here and show that we can hurt this secondary. We don't care if it's the best in, in, U, in UFL. We believe we can score in it. We got to show it in the second half. Second half, Ramsey on four rush, throws a Frankie on the sideline who runs across the field with blocking with a nice game, pick up the first down. Ramsey then throws a Ray on the sideline. With contact from Rico, Ray drops the ball incomplete. Rico's flag for the shoulder hit. What do you think of the call? I think that this was actually kind of, you know, um, it could have slightly went either way. If you look here, he does extend the hands, but as he goes in for the tag, his his elbow kind of bends, and because of that, it leads to the shoulder contacting with Ray, and because of that, that was merited a flag. Ramsey on second down throws a prodigy in the gap, almost picked up by Rico. Third down, Ramsey on four rush, trying to run, but it's sacked by stretch. UTF has to punt, but if you look right here, JP is open on the other side. Ramsey doesn't see him. They're going to have to punt. My problem with Ramsey is he's played with JP. He know what JP can do, especially driving down the field. And he doesn't look for him. He looks for more. He tries to run, but stretch because of his long reach, gets sacked. Ramsey got to be smart in this. Can't make these mistakes. Got to find his playmakers. He doesn't care. Third down, Shannon on four rush, runs in the gap for a nice game. Last down, Shannon scrambles on four rush, throws the JR in the middle, caught over Prodigy at the 50 yard line, picking up the first. Prodigy got to make this play. JR is smaller than him. Prodigy is a little more athletic, and you got to stop him here because you can stop the first down. Prodigy does it, which gives, allows him to get the first down. Second down, Shannon throws deep to Rico on the sideline, drop. Rico jumps too early and drops the ball. Third down, Shannon on four rush, runs in the gap pass, two defenders for a big game, getting to the 10 yard line. This is what makes Shannon the Michael Vick of football. The guy's feet is dangerous, and he's Damn near electric. Great play by Shannon. Last down, Shannon is blitzed by Ramsey. Rolls left, throw to Eloy in the middle of the end zone. Drop, turnover on downs. JP's going to get flagged from unsportsmanlike. And we're going to say what happens on, that, on the next drive. But this is the thing. We're trying to make Shannon a passer because we don't believe in his offense. They're the number eight offense in the league. We're not scared of them. So we're going to make Shannon a thrower. He had a big drop by Rico and then a big drop by Eloy. We can, as long as we can contain him and make him one-dimensional, we'll force these receivers to make plays, which we're not scared that they do. They will. Ramsey gets the ball back. Now, JP is going to get taken out by Mike because of the unsportsmanlike that Mike, that um, JP got getting in Shannon's face, as you see here. We're going to say what happens on the next drive because of that. Ramsey with two passes in the gap for a decent game. Third down, Ramsey throws deep to Ralph in the gap. Ralph misses the ball incomplete. This drive is stunning. I think they could have used JP. Ramsey's able to move the ball a few times. At least even when he's not throwing to JP. JP at times is a big target. He brings attention to him. What do you think about Mike pulling him out? I don't think that this was a merited um, time to pull him out at all because um, in the middle of the game, he's the only person that scored for your team. He's one of the main guys that's getting open on your, on your offense. So why take him out and restructure your offense, losing one of your best offensive players in this game? I think that all you have to do is give him a good talking to on the sideline and then put him in on the next play or something like that. But taking him out for the rest of the drive, that not only throws off the offense, but throws off JP's game as a whole. Especially when your offense only scores six points. Yes. And the six point was scored by the same guy you just took out. Exactly. Ramsey's going to go fourth down. They're going to punt. Ramsey is going to go to punt, but the punt is going to be blocked by stretch. 99 problem gets great field position. This is why they got stretch. Stretch left YMM because he wanted more of a roll. 
99 was, was happily willing to pick him up. Mm -hmm. He's making plays, not offensively like you would expect, but he's kind of been inconsistent since he played with the Browns. Yeah. But he definitely can make plays. We seen him get a big sack on, on Ramsey earlier. And now we see him here blocking a punt. Great play by Stretch. And that's exactly, like you said, that's exactly what he's here for. Because his height and his wingspan, he's, he's, he gets in the quarterback's eyes, especially on plays like this when they're throwing a the ball on the punt. And he gets um he gets the tip there and gets some great field position. Shannon throws Elon on the sideline for a decent game. Taking down Shannon on four rush is sacked by Malo. And this is why they got him. The ability to make plays from the giver position this guy's a former defensive player of the year. This is a great stop by him, stopping Shannon to be able to run. Last down, Shannon throws it to Mestre in the back of the end zone. Knocked away by AK, turn over on downs. Great UD stand on defense. And even though they kind of dropped the ball on offense, they were able to hold on defense. Even though 99 got good field position, the um, UTF's defense steps up and is able to hold there with that knockdown by Op and a lot of other defensive players keeping their receivers covered and they get a big turnover here. Second down, Ramsey throws deep to Ty in the gap. Ty stop running incomplete. Mike takes Ty. Ty is taking out of the game. Third down, Ramsey throws to JP in the middle for a decent game. Last down, Ramsey throws it to Trey, cutting in the gap. Trey misses it. Turn over on downs, but if you look here, JP was open in the middle for the first down. And I already said this for a long time when it comes to Ramsey. Ramsey's a guy that takes chances. If you look at this play, though, Trey gets some good separation away from the defender here. He is open. Okay. So most it's hard to say that a quarterback is not going to go for that throw. But Trey reads it wrong, he goes under it, he's not able to get it, and that leads to a turnover there. So again, you said it before, you make a decision like this, if you make it, you're a genius. If you miss it, you're an idiot. So you pick one, and because they miss it, that's on Ramsey right there. I don't put this on Ramsey. Wow. Really? You always blame the quarterback. I put this on Mike. Uh, we see Mike coaching. Okay. He pulled out JP. Okay. He pulled out Ty. Why is Trey playing offense? Trey's not an offensive player. He doesn't play offense well. He doesn't catch well. And this is a big drop. If this was another player, I'm pretty sure one of them would have caught. This is now what Trey does. He's up there, should be an all-star, because he's been playing well defensively, but not offensively. He shouldn't have even been on the field. This guy's not an offensive player. So if Mike wants to coach, which I respect, him doing, getting more involved coaching, well, you should take a chance of learning your personnel and your best receiver, catching-wise, is mm -hmm. open for the first down. Open. Mm -hmm. How much more do you want to get? You want to see? Make it bigger. Mm -hmm. You want to see? Make it bigger. You want to see? Make it bigger. Oh, I can't zoom it in It doesn't much. matter how much you look at it, he's still open. That's a first down. And instead of a first down, you get a turnover downs, which is a crucial play by Ramsey, giving it up back to, um, giving it up back to 99 with the game time. First down, Shannon on four rush, runs in the gap. Nice block by Rico. Shannon gets to the four yard line with time running out. Last play of the game, Shannon rolls left. Finds Smith straight open in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. I follow Shannon, leaves him open, 99, with the walk-off win, 12-6. And just like he did early in the beginning and when he first scored the six points, he gets a big run, gets the defense to follow him around. They're scared of him rushing in for the touchdown, even though he's not in position to run, but they're rolling out with him. All he does is roll to a certain position. Ock moves away following him. That leaves Mestre wide open in the back of the end zone. That's a perfectly orchestrated play by Shannon to get the walk-off touchdown there. Shannon went out and got Mestre one because he's his, his um the U team. Yeah. That's his brother. Mm -hmm. Shannon needed more weapons offensively. They had an A-Frank offense. Got Mestre. Ever since the guy got to the team, he's been making plays. Mm -hmm. This is what he does. People call him a carver killer. He's self-appointed name. Mm -hmm. I call him a guy who can make big plays similar to a Joe Blow. Mm -hmm. This guy makes plays. You put him in a situation, he can make plays. And this is all orchestrated by Shannon because if you look here, Ock is following Shannon. Why? Worrying about him running. Mm-hmm. 
Mesh trades open. Game winner. This is why they went out and got him. Davi has put a great squad together. Mm -hmm. This 99 problem team is a, a force to be reckoned with. And they was missing 60% of their guys this game. UTF. Had the ball six times. You want me to, 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 to add it up for you? Touchdown plus punt. And put it on the screen. Let me give you an equation as you go to Professor J. <laughs> Professor J. Okay. Go ahead. You have the floor. Are we ready, class? You know class? teachers don't do that no more, right? Listen, are we ready, class? <laughs> Go ahead. Touchdown plus punt plus stop plus punt plus punt plus stop equals loss. You can't have the ball six times and score once. Once. One time on their first possession and not touch the end zone again. Now, you're talking about being... You're tied for fourth offensively. You play a 99 team. That's a very good defense, but missing 60% of their players. And you get that equation, you deserve this loss. First and of that's it. Graduating class, graduating with honors. How can you graduate on a remedial math course? Listen. That doesn't get you any credits. So, again, this and that, is something. And I like that. Their offense was remedial. I like that. <laughs> That's what that offense was, remedial. For y'all don't know the definition of remedial, let's show it on the screen. <laughs> Provided or intent for students who are experienced learning dif difficulties. That is the UTF offense today. Learning difficulties mm -hmm. because you scored once and then it was difficult for you to find the end zone again. This offense today, remedial. You book it. You learned a new word. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, but man. I know how to find the end zone. Not from behind that table you No, go. when I play. Okay. The number four offense, you have Mike Subman guys in and out and you score six points. Mm-hmm. The day that Mike decides to coach, you score six points. You have Dre, Trey, um, Trey, one of your top defenders, going for a bomb route offensively and dropping a wide open catch. Something ain't right. Uh, listen, there's nothing else to say. Obviously, 99 comes away with a close win. Doing exactly what I said they were going to do all game. Listen, this was not the best game for them either, but... Shannon looked like he was on the track team. He ran circles around them. And if it wasn't for his guys dropping passes, this game would not have been as close as it was. It shouldn't have been as close as it was because he ran them out of the gym. Okay. And in the time when they thought he was going to run, he caught him. Mm. Messed straight in the end zone for a touchdown. What are you going to do? We meet you. Remedial. Okay, I know you like that I'm disappointed word. because this is a game that they could have stolen from 99. Yeah. This is a big game for them that they could have stolen from 99. And they lose the game that they should have won. So, we're going to wrap this game up. 99 with the win over UTF. 13-6. We're going to be right back. Go. Next game up, you're going to have UTF versus Wolverines. Wolverines is coming off of a loss to 99 on a forfeit. And you see have come off with a, a, a loss over 99. Wolverines, I respect Sam because Sam wants to play ball. Took this Wolverine team. It's EHS. They play well. But, they, you know, they, they lost in the second round of the playoffs. Don't quote me on that. But they ball out, you know. They came in this season – Creep was supposed to be the quarterback. He kind of pulled down on them. Um, Pig was supposed to play with them. Decided to go to UTF. And he got he picked up Ralph, former championship quarterback, guy been to the championship. Adolfo, same thing. Unfortunately, they wouldn't play with him now. 
and he's trying to, he just wants to finish his season, man. This guy's never dropped out of a league. And he gets killed. He got a few good players. You know, they, they're struggling having a consistent quarterback. But at the end of the day, one thing I give about Sam is he's going to fight and his guy's going to do the best he can, even though an undermanned to, to, to battle. And this is, they play a UCF team that's just coming off of a loss to 99. And I think they're going to give it all they got. We got to give them respect for that. And the thing about it, it's hard to see the full potential of a team or certain players when they don't have a quarterback to get them the ball. When they don't have a quarterback that can, you know, give them an opportunity to perform. If they can't get the ball, they can't do anything with it. And that's kind of what affects the team and the offense. And even though this is a defensive league, touch football is an offensive game. Right. So you got to have an offense in order to even survive out here. And when you don't have a quarterback, it's hard to say that you have an offense. And that's why we cannot see the full potential of the Wolverines and a lot of their guys. If you saw Christian played um, decent, was an all-star last year, now he's on 99. Yeah. One of the best um, defenses in the game right now. So, you know, you go and you're able to show your talents off on a team that can actually help you perform. Right. You're able to show off your skills better. But on Wolverines, you're not. The only person that's been able to really show a consistent you know, um, level of play was Sam from last year and this year, trying to play his, playing his heart out as a tight end on this team, but they don't have anybody else to answer that on, the, on their team right now. And UTF just comes off a loss to 99. This is a game they got to have. You know, I mean, it was in the beginning of the season. This team talked about, players talked about leaving. It was rumored that they was going to drop out. But right now they're battling. But right now, if they lose to Wolverines, It'll be like the Titanic going down. Mm -hmm. Because what are you going to do against a team that's under man? If you can't beat them, how are you going to beat tougher teams in your division? So this is a tough game. We're going to have to see what they do. We're going to jump right into it. Light gets the start. He's going to throw the hammer in the gap for a short game. Last down, Light on four of our scrambles, runs, but can't get the first down, turnover on downs. And I'm going to give Light props. There's a lot of teams Light could play with. And he was the only real baller that wanted to help Wolverines out and try to help them at least try to be competitive. This guy could have been on several teams in the league, and I applaud him for going to Wolverines and attempting to give him a hand. Unfortunately, he's not a quarterback, and um, they're going to get stopped. Ramsey throws deep to JP, open on the sideline, caught in the end zone for the touchdown. Greg doesn't see JP up the sideline. Six nothing, UTS. And <clears throat> that's something that you don't see every day from Ramsey going downfield to JP of all right. people. Listen, JP can do that every now and then, not the fast receiver on the field, but he knows how to get open. And you see here, Greg does not you see him Greg running down the sideline. And he takes off on this play. Ramsey's able to find him for the easy touchdown. Hands is hands. Yeah. Doesn't matter what's attached to him. At the end of the day, if you have hands, which this man does, he's capable of making plays. Second half, to get in the first down, Harold throws to Alex in the gap for a decent game. Third down, Harold throws in the gap, off target, picked off by Prodigy. UTF gets the ball back. But I'm not going to give UTF a cookie yet. They're playing satisfactory football, not anything that I can give them great credit for in this game right now. Third down, Ramsey throws to Pete on the sideline, caught at the one yard line, first down. Greg not guarding anybody. And we're seeing Greg making mistakes. And Ramsey, I'm going to give him his props because I don't care who you're playing against. If you see a weakness, you attack him. He seen um, Greg seem like the liability on the defense, and he's going after him. That is a great catch by Pito getting him to the one-yard line. First of goal, Ramsey finds Frankie to back it in zone for the touchdown. 12 nothing. UTF. A lot of the guys are inconsistent, but one thing that can improve your game overall on defense is communication. If they talk and let people know, hey, pass them off to this person, this person's going deep, okay, I'm going to pick them up. That's the way to communicate, and I think that Greg didn't have that with the cornerback yeah. here, and because of that, he was left blind on the play yet again for another big play. Harold throws to Sam, cutting in the gap, who runs for a nice game, picking up the first down. We talked about Sam. The guy's going to do whatever he can for his brand. Big play by him there. Harold throws to Alex in the gap for a few more yards. Third down, Harold throws to Greg in front of the end zone. Trey gets his hand on it as he fight for the ball. Ball falls out incomplete. Sam believes it should have been a touchdown. What do you think? And on this play, if you look at it here, if you slow it down, you um as, as Greg is going to catch the ball, you see Shrey get his hands on it. So he has both hands on it. At this point here, Greg only has one hand on it. So right now, 
usually if both guys get the ball at the same time, It'll it's be a rewarded touchdown. for the touchdown for the offense. But, but Trey gets two hands while Greg gets one. So as they fight for the ball, it drops. That leads to an uh, incomplete pass. The least, um, the best case scenario for um, Wolverines was that it was an incomplete pass because that could have been an interception. Harold throws Alex in the gap, who sacked short of the end zone, turnover on downs. Listen, Harold came in and they're moving the ball a lot better than when they had light. Mm -hmm. They just can't be able to punch it in. I know this is hurting them, but they get stopped again. And I think it was that last play that kind of threw yeah. them off. They thought that that was their touchdown play. But Trey, being a great defender, playing well all season, is able to get his hands on at the last second. And because of that play, it kind of shifted the whole momentum of their offense, and they couldn't get, in, get any further than that. Second down, Ramsey throws a high pass to JP on the sideline. JP with a great one-handed catch, but it's only for a few yards, but it's still a great catch. Mm -hmm. UTF is going to have to punt. It's funny how that's the highlight of the drive and ended up having a punt. That shows that JP was open that whole time, and Ramsey's looking for more. Because Ramsey is looking at this team thinking that he can abuse them any way he wants, he's taking more than he's given, and because of that, it leads to them forcing, um, um, being forced to punt the ball. Last play before half, Harold throws it up, caught by Alex over Prodigy, but the ball never crosses the plane, no touchdown. I know it's, it's going to be high time, but when the play is play, it play is play. Mm -hmm. Alex jumps over Prodigy, and I'm sorry Prodigy, but you got him all. <laughs> It can come from anywhere and anybody. Great play by Alex, jumping over Prodigy for the great catch. Unfortunately, it wasn't for a touchdown. Takes it to the half, 12 nothing. Wolverines is giving everything they got. You know, I would love to coach these guys because um, these guys are gonna give you everything they have. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they lack a little bit of talent, but Sam is going to make sure the guys play the best that they can, regardless of who they have. So at the end of the day, you know, he gives everything he needs, man. I mean, I feel bad for him because I, I would love to see this man have an opportunity to win because he plays hard and he's a guy I would love to have on my team. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you play with what you have, and right now they don't have much, but, you know, um, it'll be interesting to see what they get to do in the playoffs, you know, leading towards the end of the season, um, you know, after the end of the season. Because, again, if they figure out a way to play, they may surprise some people. But jumping on to UTF, they score two touchdowns in the beginning of the game, and then they punt once. That, was, that should have been at least a first down. They didn't even get a first down yep. on that one. So I don't understand that. Listen. On a team like this that's struggling, that's not able to really do much, that doesn't really have a strong defense, Ramsey's supposed to pick this team apart. They have two touchdowns, but I think that they should have did a lot better in this first half just because of who they're playing. Nothing against the Wolverines, but you play who's in front of you, and you play hard, and it don't seem like they're doing that. They're playing down in their competition, and that's why it's only 12 nothing right now. We're going to jump right into the second half. Third down, Ramsey throws with Ralph, cutting in the middle for a nice game, picking up the first down. Second down, Rams on four rush, runs on the sideline for a decent game. Prodigy's flag for a block in the back. What do you think of the call? This was a clear block in the back. Yes, clear. this was a good, good run. But if you see here, Prodigy tries to get there, um, tries to let go right after he blocks, but the ref already sees it. it's too late, and that's a merited call there. Last down, Ramsey throws to JP in the corner of the end zone, knocked away by Alex, turnover on downs, and they make their first stop of the game. They stopped them before forcing them to punt, but this time they made a great turn of a great defensive stand by Wolverines. And at least they're trying their best to make plays happen and taking advantage of a lot of UTS mistakes. Now, the fact that they can't put up points is what's killing them, but their defense is solid enough that they're able to prevent them from scoring twice in a row. Harold throws the light in the middle for a decent game. Then Harold throws in the gap again for another decent game. Fourth down, Harold throws deep to Greg in the middle, almost picked up by Trey, turnover on downs, he could have thrown Alex short for the first down, and that's a big mistake by Harold. He had a guy open and took a little more than that. But understand that I don't I'm not even sure if Harold, you know, is a person who's supposedly their quarterback out there. So he's not gonna be the one that make the best decisions out there. He's trying his best to make something happen, you know, because they have nobody else. So it seems like he saw something downfield. Unfortunately, because he's not an actual he's not a full-fledged quarterback out there he's not able to throw the ball precisely but i think he should have um 
dumped the ball to Alex. So that was a higher percentage pass. Third down, Ramsey throws the feet throw in the middle for a decent game. Last down, Ramsey on four rush. Throws the time to back it in. So off target, turnover on downs, and they make another stop. Wolverines with another great defensive stand. Stops UTF again. And I don't see Mike taking people out in this game. Ha. Huh. It's funny how when you're playing a low, low, um, a low-level team, you're not taking this game seriously. A coach is supposed to take every single game seriously. Look how horrible their offense is playing right now against a team that virtually has no defense. These last three times that they stopped, the first two, um, the first time they punted, and the last two times they got stopped, that was all their offense's fault. Yes, we would give the Wolverines credit on defense, but this is all the offense's fault. And that's why Mike has to step in and make decisions out there to make them play better. Last time after a few short passes, Harold's blitz by Lay. Throws it to Gap. Throws it to Light in the Gap. Picked off by Trey. UTF gets the ball back. Trey, sixth interception of the year. He's been playing great. That is the, the one thing I can say about Trey. He's been consistent on defense, going out there, making plays, and catching interceptions throughout the season. This is his sixth interception. That's... um. I don't know if he's playing for any awards, but I think he's doing his best to play for his team to come away with wins at the end of the day. After getting the first down, Ramsey with two passes in the gap for a decent game. Last down, Ramsey with blocker from Frankie. Scrambles, throws it to Pito in the corner of the end zone, in the front of the end zone, for the touchdown, end of the game, 18-0 UTF. And finally, towards the end of the game, they put an offensive drive together to score. Listen. I'm killing them throughout the game because this could have been a much better game for UTF. You never try, you never play it down to your um, um your competition because anything can happen out there. So you play smart and you play hard, and because of that, eventually they get back together and end the game. Wolverine really played good defense. Mm -hmm. You know this is coming in the number four ranked offense, and they was able to stop them four times, three times. Rams had the ball six times, score three. So 50% 50, 50 of the time, they stop. Mm -hmm. That's a great try against a, 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 a not a great Wolverines team. But unfortunately, they got stopped. They had the ball six times. They got stopped. They threw an into. They got stopped. They got stopped. They got stopped. And they threw an into. So, you know, offensively, they don't have a great offensive team. Defensively, they got a few players. Yeah. You know, um, if they could get their offense back on track, things would be a lot better. But at the end of the day, I give this team as props because they just tried to compete and they came up a little short. And UTF, even though this is a win that they were supposed to win, this is a win that they needed to win. Um, after that loss against 99, they were supposed to put all of their energy into winning this game. I don't think that they did. So, you know, it ended up being a game that stretched longer than it needed to. And out there, when you stretch the game longer than it needs to, guys can get hurt. Um, many different things can happen if you don't play hard and play smart. So because of that, they kind of stretch the game out. Yes, they come away with a win, 18 nothing, but it looks better on paper than it does when you look at the game. They made a lot of mistakes. Hopefully they do not drag this into the next game that they have to play.